Hey everybody, welcome to another webinar here at Vital Plan. We're excited to have you along tonight for our conversation with Jen Smiley, all about healthy holiday food swaps. Uh, Jen is a expert food coach and founder of Wake Up and Read the Labels, and we're really excited to have her on to talk about some secrets to clean eating and how to make the holidays a little bit better with uh, some of the challenges that people often experience with um, foods that don't make you feel very good after you eat them, even though we love the taste of them. Um, my name is Tim. I am the wellness director here at Vital Plan. I work with our support team and a lot of our education. Uh, you may have seen me on webinars with Dr. Rawls in the past, and I'm also an herbalist. So i um, really glad to have you here. Um, so Vital Plan is a holistic health company, an herbal supplement company founded in 2008 by Dr. Bill Rawls and his daughter, Braden Rawls. Um, we are devoted to enhancing people's wellness and vitality through a holistic health education, robust customer support and health coaching, and physician-formulated herbal supplements. So we are a certified B Corporation, which means we take, we take into account social and environmental factors in our operations, um, and we have uh, really enjoyed helping a lot of customers get their lives back and get back to better health and optimize their health and longevity. So this webinar is just one of many that we do to provide education to all of you so that you can live the healthiest life possible. Uh, the webinar tonight is, is just one of many, many webinars. Plan here is a quick introduction and then we'll get into our healthy holiday food swaps. We will have a Q&A afterwards and then we're gonna have a special offer from Jen Smiley and also we're gonna do a little webinar drawing giveaway from Vital Plan. So make sure you stick around for both of those. We will be doing a, sending out a replay to everyone that registered, so feel free to take notes, but don't feel like you have to jot absolutely everything down. We'll send that out in the next day or two. If you're not familiar with Jin, she is an expert food coach and creator of the Clean Eating Academy and founder of Wake Up and Read the Labels. She loves working with people to help them eat cleaner and feel better and look great. Um, you can find her uh, very active over at Instagram at, at um, wake up and read the labels at their handle. So Jen, if you want to go ahead and join us, we'll jump into our presentation here, our interview rather. Well, hello everyone. Good evening, wherever you are. It's nice to see you. I'm excited to be here. Thanks Tim for um, inviting me here and hopefully my capability of helping people read food labels and you being the herbalist could truly transform um, their lives. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're really excited to have you, Jen, and um, really curious to hear more about your work and how you got to be where you are, how you, be, you decided to become a health coach. I know you were previously uh, a spin instructor, if I'm not mistaken, and somehow this led to working with people on food and reading labels. Do you want to share just a little bit about that journey to where you are now? For sure. So I've been personally eating this way for almost 10 years, my husband and I, because we had some, you know, regular inflammatory related chronic diseases in our mid 20s. And we're sitting here going, wait a second, why are we at the doctor's appointment? Why are we having inhalers? Why are we dealing with acid reflux and all these things? And so what had happened was we are, um, we're in our 20s and I started reading the labels. And at the time I didn't realize I was reading the labels, right? I just figured, oh, this protein is made with real ingredients and this ketchup is made with real ingredients. So fast forward, I have a family member get diagnosed with prostate cancer, 56 years old. They come to me um, and funny thing was my family called us the freaks. They knew we ate freak food, right? And right. so he said, hey, Jen, can you help him lose some weight before his robotic surgery? So think about this. You get diagnosed with prostate cancer. You have absolutely no treatment for three months because you're waiting for surgery. And so I go to the grocery and I get eight grocery bags. And I said, listen, here's your pizza. Here's your pasta. Here's your ice cream. Here's your cereal. Here's your milk, right? Eat this stuff. When you run out, take a picture go to the grocery and get it again. Okay, do you guys wanna know what happened in three months? Yes? Yes. Okay, in three months, he <laughs> lost 35 pounds. 
He got off of blood pressure, off of cholesterol medication. But the most beautiful thing was he had been monitoring his PSA level every two weeks um, with blood work. And the numbers were actually shrinking every week. So at that moment, I said, hmm, I, I, it, it might not just help me, right? I thought maybe this right. is just helping me. No, it helped him. So then, yes, I was a spin instructor with about 200 followers on Instagram. And I decided, I'm looking at everyone going, these, it's women in their 40s, 50s, 60s, working out so hard. They're dieting and they're complaining about how they feel and how they look every day, right? In the gym. Right. So I said, you know what? I'm going to start putting my turkey sandwich on Instagram and I'm going to start showing people my grocery hauls. And I kid you not, within three weeks, a lady walked up to me with a blank check, 50 years old, and said, Will you please take me to the grocery store and will you please come clean out my kitchen? And I was like, oh my gosh, okay, do I do I have a service? What is happening? And I in within two months, I had about 40 private clients. I was cleaning out their pantries, taking them grocery shopping, and their bodies started changing instantly. And at that point, I felt as though I have a duty here that I need to show more people. This is the way food and grocery shopping is supposed to be. That's awesome. Career shift like that. 100%. I was stay-at-home mom, workout, which I think benefits a lot of people that hear my story because I want people to know that you don't have to have any certifications. You don't need to be a doctor. It's not yeah. rocket science. It's literally just looking at food understanding the ingredients, understanding, you know, the marketing is there, seeing food. I do believe that people do want to be healthier, right? And people with COVID are noticing, hey, inflammation is a real thing. And I'm trying different things. I'm being prescribed medication, but but these consumers are actually confused. In the holistic world with holistic ways, just like you guys are doing, the holistic practitioners and even clean eating, consumers are fragmented, they're siloed, they don't know where to go, they don't know who to trust, and they don't know where to turn to. So here at Wake Up, we're really trying to become the web MD for clean eating and healthy living and connect people just like you um, to our consumers. That's awesome. And I like that your first example there and the first experience with this other than yourself was a man, because I know you work with a lot of women and often women women are more proactive about healthy eating habits and are trying to bring their husbands along. But this is really something for everybody to apply, right? Everybody. I see it. Clients who have kids with ADHD, the teachers are calling the parents saying, hey, I don't know what you're doing, but your child is paying better attention now. They are sitting down, they're behaving differently. Their skin from their eczema is clearing up. Psoriasis is going away. Um, You name it, they're sleeping better. They're happier. All the things. It works for pregnant people, old people, young people, old people. Uh, My mom once told me, and I feel like this stands true for clean eating, but she says, you know, everybody always makes up an excuse for, or delays having a baby, right? A lot of people say I'm too young or I'm too old. I'm too rich or I'm too poor. There's always this excuse. And really you just have to have your baby and then everybody figures it out, right? There's billions of humans on the earth. We figure it out. Same thing for clean eating. A lot of people say, oh, I'm too, I'm too poor or I'm too rich. I'm too young. I'm too old. I'm pregnant. I'm not. I'm a boy. I'm a girl. No, I'm telling you, clean eating is the way food is supposed to be. Right. Yeah. It's a, about priorities and, and having the tools and the understanding. So why don't we go ahead and just jump right into what are you looking for when you read a label? How do we, you know, I think a lot of people probably look on some labels and, you know, look for look at the first few and they know there's, if it's at the beginning, that means there's more of it in that. But what, what are the top kinds of things that you look for and what does clean eating mean to you? Absolutely. So first things first is an astonishing stat that I read was only 9% of Americans can read a food label. And it's often because Mm -hmm. we're seeing things like 
Nutrigrain or whole grain or non-GMO unsweetened and it's conditioning us to believe it's healthy, right? And really it should. I have this guy, his name's um, Parker Brooks and he's from Lovebird Cereal and he actually worked for the marketing company of General Mills for decades. Mm -hmm. And he felt as though that it was um, kind of not inhumane, but he felt sinful being in this room every day and they're slapping mermaids on the marketing and they're trying to figure out which additives to put in there in order for people to need to eat more. So he created a clean brand, right? And so I think, and he, he said on my podcast, hey, a lot of us see organic. And we kind of, we know what organic means, right? But why, why is there this category of organic? Why isn't all the other food called poison? Why don't we call that something, right? And so that's just food for thought. So what is clean eating? Clean eating means eating foods made with real ingredients. So of course, everybody knows if you go the perimeter of the grocery store and you eat your meats and you eat your fruits and your vegetables and your fish, like that's the cleanest you can be. That's the most grand thing, right? Right. But we want to eat cookies. We want to eat sweet potato casserole. We want some fried chicken. We want popcorn. We want quesadillas. We want pizza. We want pasta. That's when we come in. We come in and say, listen, In the 1990s, there used to be about 10,000 grocery items. Guess what? Today, there's more than 50,000. The market is super saturated by a few companies, and it is confusing. And I'm here to let people know it's not your fault. It's not your fault that you're turning to Weight Watchers or you're turning to these recipes online that tell you to use cornstarch and tell you to use vegetable oil and whole wheat pasta, yet you're still battling inflammation and chronic diseases. That is where we come in and help you discover, hey, look, you want to make your gravy this is how you make it if you want pasta this is what you're looking for nice yeah. so what what would you say so whole foods or real foods that's the that's the kind of key and i think i think rule. they kind of go i think they kind of go hand in hand so once you do start reading labels right you'll you'll soon discover there might be let's say a barbecue sauce out there okay and this barbecue sauce is going to have Um, high fructose corn syrup, which probably could be argued, is that a real food or not? However, it's going to have caramel color. It's going to have monosodium phosphate. It's going to have dipotassium EDTA. And then I take three three steps back and ask someone, hey, do you want a plate of disodium EDTA for Thanksgiving? And I think most people would say no, right? Or if you take a seven-year-old who just started learning to read and say, hey, do you know what EDTA is? And they're going to go, no, I have no idea. But then you say, hey, do you know what a coconut is? They're going to say, yeah, I recognize that, right? So Mm -hmm. you're discovering the barbecue sauce made with coconut aminos and made with black pepper and made with, you know, real ingredients you can recognize. Right. Nice. Okay. So what, what would you say are some of the biggest misconceptions people have about reading food labels? Ooh, good question, Tim. I would say a misconception is focusing on the nutrition facts, because if you look at it, right, we're reading our calories, we're reading our fat, we're reading we're, how many more diets do we need, right? This is a billion dollar industry. How you can lose weight if you are in caloric restriction, right? But you can't get yourself out of feeling bad. Meaning somebody, I see it all the time. People lose weight. They go on Weight Watchers and they lose weight. But what happens? They have brain fog. Their joints still ache. They're still taking medications. Their skin's still breaking out. So even though you're focusing on your numbers and you're typing them into your apps and your things look good, You don't realize you're eating those weird ingredients you can't pronounce. Just like I said, the disodium EDTA. And these are tons of additives going into our food that's actually promoting inflammation. And this promoting of inflammation is what's driving up all these chronic diseases and pains. Yeah. So overemphasizing, looking at just the fats, the carbs, the sugars, and not paying attention to whether it is real food or highly processed food. Not to mention the fact that 
if you are talking about nutrition, those are just macronutrients. There's micronutrients. And then there are things that are even more, uh, you know, sparsely present in plants and, and meats um, that, that are very nutritious, like phytonutrients and um, constituents like that, that have a lot of anti-inflammatory and therapeutic value. Um, and once again, eating, making different choices about where you're getting your meat and whether it's organically grown or how that food is cultivated is going to di differentiate uh, how much micronutrition is in there as well. Oh yeah. I call that. So I call that an evolved clean eater, right? For a lot of people, they're grocery shopping because it says gluten-free, it says vegan, it says unsweet, and it says dairy-free. We need to help these people discover the dairy-free made with real ingredients, the gluten-free made with real ingredients, the unsweetened made with real ingredients. And once they're there and they discover, oh my gosh, I wake up and I feel so empowered. My belly feels flatter. My brain fog has been lifted. Then I like them to go discover, hey, discover what organic can do. Discover the phytonutrients and all the powers of the herbs and the, the things that are truly missing in that diet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, I like uh, one of the things I love about your approach is how simple you keep it. Simple. And um, I know you talk a lot about this idea of swapping foods and how yeah. that can feel more expansive rather than restrictive. And so for people that are, following a paleo diet or following a Mediterranean diet or are vegetarian. Can you talk a little bit about your perspective on why these swaps you feel like are um, really helpful and how they make it more sustainable? And, and if that's compatible with someone that say is on a diet that they like? Yeah. So I'm going to, I'll bring up a story about a client of mine. Her name's Sage. She's 50 years old. Okay. And I think a lot of people watching right now would probably relate to this when right. you're working out all the time, right? You're not seeing any results and you're grocery shopping and you're eating the same things over and over and over. And so when Sage came to me, I said, listen, what, what foods do you love? And she says, why, why are you asking me that? Right. And I said, because I want you to understand you can eat whatever you want. Um, and she says, well, this is odd. This is different. Every time I've done anything, my menu actually got restricted. Okay. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. thing about what we're doing is we're actually expanding people's menu and there's no food category that gets eliminated. So if you're eating Mediterranean, if you're eating paleo, if you're vegan, if you're gluten-free, you can still eat those things, but now you understand which brands you should be buying. And that is how you get the results you want. So all of a sudden Sage is eating sweet potato burger sliders and she's eating tacos every week and she's eating um, pizza on Friday. And so what happens? She loses 30 pounds. She gets off a couple of medications, her face changes, her energy, her self-confidence, everything changes because now she's supplying herself with real fits. Right on. And so that's, you're starting where people are at. That helps it be more sustainable. And they're much smaller changes because it doesn't feel like you're ripping their favorite foods from them. Correct. Yep. Right on. Awesome. Super easy. Super Good. easy. Well, let's, let's start to transition into our holiday, this holiday time we're approaching here. Yeah. Very exciting. Um, you know, people are getting excited about what they're going to be cooking, what they're going to be eating. Um, Maybe there's also some anxiety building up because oh. they, for me, it was mashed potatoes. Everybody knows in my family, I would eat a ton of mashed potatoes when I was growing up. And then it turned into like, actually, I don't want a whole plate full anymore. You all, you don't have to make <laughs> 10 gallons. Um, like so Tim is an herbalist now. We don't have to <laughs> overload on the uh, mashed potatoes, but <laughs> I'm curious, have you, did you used to eat like the mashed potatoes from the box? Oh, I mean, I'm also uh, love backpacking and outdoor trips. And so that was a staple um, for that. But when I was at home, I, I like to make a, you know, a homemade good mashed potato with butter, milk, okay. salt, pepper. Now I would add herbs to that and, and maybe change some other things, but yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure there's a lot of things it now having read those labels, there are a lot of things in those mashed potatoes that you just add water to that would oh not make me feel very good. Oh my gosh. I was actually, I looked up a mashed potatoes in a box earlier and it was the Idaho, it's the Idaho um, brand. Yeah. And it's really funny because if you look at the box, right, it's just like 
made with 100% real potatoes and it's America's favorite. And what else? Right. And you read the back and our mission is to pick one potato at a time, yada, yada. But then when you read the ingredients, okay, you got your potatoes, then it has emulsifiers. Emulsifier studies are showing this causes gut disruption. This promotes inflammation. Plus it has sodium acid, pyrophosphate, sodium bisulfate, citric acid, and a, another preservative. And so again, it's like, hey, look, your mashed potatoes could work for you. They could be nutritional. They could be medicinal. They could help heal your gut. But when we're being tricked by these boxes that say, we think we're getting potatoes and add water because they make the ingredients real small, but really we're just getting a bunch of ingredients our body doesn't recognize. And when that goes into your belly, all of a sudden your belly and your whole body puts off an alarm system. It says, what is this stuff? I don't know how to digest this. Now it makes you tired, right? Because it has to go figure out how to digest it. It bloats because it doesn't know what to do. And then all kinds of other things happen, like people break out or you get a headache or you're craving more food because you need more energy. And so Whatever your body is telling you, that is a sign. That is how your body is talking to you. And so it's a beautiful thing that you have these symptoms because it's 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 cause and effect. It's letting you know, hey, what's going in? I'm showing you what, what it is by showing you what's coming out. Yeah. And, and so let's say people want to make the swaps that we're going to talk about in just a second yeah. here. Um, how do you bring on other family members, say, <laughs> to getting on board with this. And, you know, you said when you, you and your husband started eating differently, everyone's yeah. calling it freak food. So yes. you bring your freak food to Thanksgiving. Yep. Well, how, what's the reception there and how do you, okay. how do you navigate that? Yep. So the first secret is if you're ready, right, you did the work. You're like, I'm ready to do this for me. Don't tell anyone. Do not show up and say, I made clean spinach and artichoke dip and clean mashed potatoes. I can't eat any of your stuff because guess what? They haven't had their wake up moment. And so it's going to come off as defensive to them and it's not going to go well. Instead, bring your stuff. Don't say anything. And when they eat it, they're all going to go, oh my gosh, I, they start to taste flavors. It's more flavorful. It overall, it's going to taste more fresh, right? Then mm -hmm. they say, how'd you make that? And that's a good gateway into, oh, I did it like this, or I use this to make the sauce. I have this chip. Um, and that's how you start to get the family on board. I say when people go to work or they're doing it with their family, it's best to start with you. And when people see your results, they see your body changing, your energy changing, your self-confidence changing, your skin, then mm -hmm. they say, hey, can you please let me know what you're doing? Why are you so happy? Why are you over there eating chocolate every day and you're looking like this? Like they start questioning it. So that's the best way to approach it. I like it. And what about, um, so that's, you can bring your food that is yep. uh, clean yep. and let other people get introduced to that. What about the other food that is there? Say other folks have not made swaps yet or they're not on board with this. Uh, how do you navigate a lot of the yeah. problems, you know, the overeating, the the grazing all day, Thanksgiving, yeah. um, you know, the, the, the isolation of, well, I'm just going to eat the dish I brought and skip yeah. all these other classic family favorites. Yep. So great questions. Too. Great questions. Um, okay. So here's the deal. I love to make the analogy of working out. Okay. If you work out, say four days a week, the other three days, you're pretty mindful because you work out efficiently, right? So you probably right. get the, the toning you want. You get, you get better at your workouts. You start to see some results and you keep going. Now, let's reverse it and say you only work out two days a week. Well, guess what? The other five, you're probably not that mindful. Mm. You're not going to gain the muscles you want. Your body's not going to be effective from those workouts. Your endurance isn't really going to change. So mm. if you are eating majority of the time clean, well, then guess what? Those times you can't control it, you might feel a little funky. You might feel bloated. You might be gassy. You might have a headache. Um, you might gain a pound or two. But if you get back on it, you can like, the inflammation and the weight and the problems, they drop like that. So for my clients, especially, I say, listen, 
You're always eating clean, bring a clean dish or two and make the best choice while you're there. It does take a little education. Hey, what the mashed potatoes probably are going to have bad dairy in it, or it might be from the box with all those emulsifiers, right? So maybe we can turn to the green beans without the fried topping. And so it's, it's, I say, I have videos on this as well. Like when you walk into an event and you see a buffet or you're at a pre-made, you know, event of any kind, you make decisions based off of assuming do I know if it has dairy? Do I know if it has gluten? Do I know if it has sugar? Do I know if it has preservatives? And so you eat right. more of what you think is clean and you also eat more of what you brought. But with that being said, don't freight. It's just a day. I think it's just so much more important to have this as a lifestyle um, right. and, and enjoy your day with your family and really do good when you can um that day but most importantly make this a lifestyle it's not a one day it's not a one day shop yeah I've, I've enjoyed getting some of your emails as I was preparing for this and learning more about you and um one of the things you talked about with kids especially is the idea of don't worry about being perfect just yep. be better and I think yep. that's like a wonderful motto because it's so easy to get more anxious and just spoil oh. the enjoyment of eating healthy good clean food when you do yeah and it's overwhelming and you people can feel like a failure and that's I'm not here to say hey my family eats perfect or you need to eat perfect because the choices are not perfect and it's very hard to find perfect but if you can get that 90 percent you will get results you will feel good yeah and you'll know should should we get into some of these swaps let's do it Awesome. All right, cool. I'm going to pull some slides back up for a couple classic uh, holiday dishes. Um, you may or may not be all about these in your family, but the first one is turkey. So tell us about turkey, Jen. Yes. So I always say you are what your cow eats when I'm referring to dairy, but I figured, hey, we're talking about holiday swap. So where where's your turkey? Where's your turkey coming from? Believe it or not, a lot of those frozen turkeys we're buying have those weird ingredients we can't pronounce those emulsifiers, those additives, those preservatives. So most turkeys on the market are conventional. Okay. It is the cheaper one, of course, but guess what? It's going to be filled with emulsifiers. Okay. It's going, that turkey is going to have eaten GMO feed, which studies show out there. I'm not the doctor. It's showing, Hey, GMO in our crops is leading to autoimmune. It's leading to gut microbiome change. It's leading to inflammation. Okay. So it might seem like a good idea to save a little bit of money, but here's the thing. You might have to take off of work the next day. You might have to continue taking your medications. You might have pains and aches and have to miss out on those meaningful family conversations around the dinner table. You might have to leave to go take a nap. You might have to leave to go to the bathroom, right? So you have to look at, um, I guess, the investment of your health and how you want to feel. So pasture-raised turkey, I would just Google where to find a pasture-raised turkey. You can find some websites um, that could ship it to your door, but this generally means that the turkey is eating more natural things. They're not getting the GMO feed. They're eating on grass. They're eating on bugs, right? This is the way it's supposed to be. We're trying to go back to the basics um, and it's not. there's not gonna be any weird emulsifiers or additives in there. Yeah. Is the um, farmer's market, do you have, very, do you find people have very good luck there talking yes. to local farmers? I imagine you could plan ahead quite a bit though. Yes, I would definitely do that. Um, there's another brand, Dietzel, D-I-E-T-S-E-L, I believe is how you spell it. I would check them out online as well. Okay. All right. Next up, we have cranberry, classic cranberry sauce. You know, I was never into the cranberry sauce. Are you? Uh, I, it has grown on me. The, the, I like the tart flavor. and uh, But I wonder, why don't we eat more of this throughout the year? Right. Like, it's, it's good to get all the tastes in your diet, too, I feel like. And we don't, we don't have enough of this tart. Yeah. So um, I am making it this year. We always have it for Thanksgiving, but I'm always like, I don't know. I always just thought of it as that weird Thanksgiving food I'd never eaten. But yeah, that's how um, it was for my whole childhood. <laughs> exactly. It's like, oh, grandma eats cranberry sauce. What is that? So 
If you check out the leading brand of cranberry sauce, check it out, you guys. High fructose corn syrup and corn syrup, okay? Now, you might be wondering, oh, what's wrong with high fructose corn syrup? Well, guess what? This is one of those sweeteners that have been shown to drive inflammation, okay? Inflammation is associated with that increased risk of diabetes, heart disease, and cancer, okay? It it's just a harmful substance you do not want. So here at Wake Up and Read the Labels, we say, listen, you need these five ingredients to make a healing cranberry sauce that I promise will taste so much better. Coconut sugar is not refined and it has something called inulin in it, which slows that blood sugar spike. So when you eat high fructose corn syrup and corn syrup, your blood sugar spikes up and then it drops down. When it's down, that's why you have to take a nap, okay? And that's why you say, oh my gosh, I've been eating all day. It's because your blood sugar wants to come back up to be level, so you go and eat more food. Wake up and read the labels, cranberry sauce is going to help keep that blood sugar more stable. And really, it's just wholesome food and I guarantee tastes amazing. That's awesome. That I would like to try that recipe. And then the cinnamon in there, from the herbal perspective, cinnamon is also hypoglycemic and nutmeg is a carminative. So that helps prevent feelings of uh, griping and uneasiness and gas and bloating in the stomach. So that's a lovely combination of things to put in there. Yeah, so so healing, Tim, so healing. All right, next up we've got butter. All right, lots of things have butter in it. So what's the deal uh, here? Yes, okay, so mashed potatoes, right? I thought, okay, what are people doing with mashed potatoes? They're doing potatoes and they're doing butter and milk. And I see, Rosie, you're saying, do we suggest no dairy? I do suggest no dairy for 21 days in order to heal your gut, okay? Most of the dairy out there is very similar to this conventional dairy, meaning the cows are being fed GMO feed, they're being fed grains. Those grains promote inflammation, okay? So when you're shopping for butter, you're shopping for grass, I mean grass, you're shopping for butter, yogurt, um, milk, ice cream, cheese, you want to find it from a grass fed cow. Okay. That is anti-inflammatory, right? So you don't have to eliminate cheese. You don't have to eliminate yogurt, any of that. We show you those clean swaps so that your body can recognize it, digest it, and you can feel good. Awesome. All right. Then we've got cream of mushroom remind people what is this usually in like green bean casserole yep what else yep. 100 percent green bean casserole and i feel like there's another casserole for it a lot of chicken dishes sometimes chicken and noodle dishes there you go this. yeah this is like i feel like this is your ultimate base for thanksgiving right yeah very hearty uh-huh so if you check it out vegetable oil most people don't realize that vegetable oil is high in omega-6s and that's why the mediterranean diet is anti-inflammatory because it's high in omega-3s the western diet here in america here in america has too many omega-6s and that's right. why we're all inflamed you can go to starbucks and get their almond milk you can get their breakfast um anywhere you look you're eating vegetable oil, canola oil, corn, peanut, Chick-fil-A. It's all got it, right? So right. right here off the bat, your cream of mushroom soup, guess what? It's promoting inflammation. That wheat flour is spiking up your blood sugar. Um, the soy, likely from a GMO crop. Monosodium glutamate, do you want that as, an, as a plate for Thanksgiving? No, this is a preservative or an additive. It's an ingredient that makes your body say, oh, I don't like that. And then the natural in flavor is a nice way to say a chemical to make it taste really good. So all you got to do, have your same recipe, but use this mushroom soup made with real ingredients your body can recognize and digest. So Pacific Foods, that's a good brand. I know they make a lot of broths and other stuff as well. They do. Yes. I can't say that I promote every single one. Um, I, that's why I like to tell people I give them some ingredients to avoid and some ingredients to limit, but they do have some good ones. Yes. Cool. Good one. All right. And then I think last up, we've got stuffing. Stuffing, right? You got to stuff your turkey or you got to have stuffing. It's one of my favorites. And I know we want to bring up bread. Like if I could just yes. live off of one food for the rest of my life, it is bread. Give me some warm bread. Um, mm. But 
This is one of the leading brands, Pepperidge Farm. I see it all over. Okay, enriched wheat flour actually means they've stripped all the fiber and all the nutrients, which is why you do see those fortified or added nutrients in the food, right? That's when the you, enrichment part? Yep, okay. enrichment. That's what that means. So they take all the fiber out. And so the wheat flour actually is pure glucose. So it's spiking your blood sugar, okay? And then they add in the fortified vitamins. No, you want real vitamins from real food, okay? Um, vegetable oils, here we are again. Calcium proponeate, don't even know what that is, but why eat it, right? Uh, somebody said, if you can't read it, don't eat it. Um, right. And then you got your soy and you got just more preservatives. So wake up and read the labels. We're saying, hey, take these you know, 10 simple ingredients that even a seven-year-old could pick out you mix it all up and that is your stuffing. Awesome. So you've got a recipe at wake up and read the labels. I take it for stuffing. Yes, we sure do. I have it sitting right here. We have a sausage stuffing and a turkey stuffing. All right. Cool. Well, um, that is just a sampling. I know there are a lot more swaps. I imagine we'll talk about more of those in the Q&A. So if folks are, I see some questions coming in. If you want to start sending some more in, feel free. Um, and then Jen has got a couple special things to offer if you're interested in learning more. Yeah. So it looks like a bunch of people. I see you, Phyllis. Do I have a list of most common ingredients and their inflammatory effects? Um, and someone else had asked about a good brand, all these things. So I have a product recommendation sheet that has only been offered one time outside of my online course. Um, it is right here. It is over, I want to say it's over five or six pounds of paper. It's over 1,800 clean product swaps in every single category, okay? Over 100 pages. This will help you, guide you through the grocery store. It is only available for the next 24 hours for you guys for showing up. Plus, you're going to get a copy of my Thanksgiving menu, which has about 10 or 12 recipes, um, and it shows you the exact brands to buy, okay? Normally, I don't give my product recommendation sheet out. It is the number one requested resource, but if you go to cleaneatingswaps.com, you can get a copy of that um, and also the Thanksgiving menu. So check out cleaneatingswaps.com, and you'll find all the clean swaps. Awesome. Also, Yep. And also to start your journey, go to freemorningguide.com to discover three common foods that are ruining your day and killing your energy. All right. Great. Well, that is a great uh, kickoff for our swaps and gives people, I think, some really good ideas on the kinds of things we're looking out for to make our holiday meals healthier. So thank you for that, for Jen. Sure. You're really good at keeping up with that timing. I love it. <laughs> well, we've got an hour here, so I want to get to some live questions as well. I know um, we Let's see, see some of those coming in. So why don't we talk? take one from here along more? Um, can we talk about some good snack options like rice cakes and nut butters? How do you feel about those as far as love? Some Yes, love nut butters. You want to make sure that you're getting um, a nut butter with, you know, either peanuts only or macadamias only or almonds or walnuts, whatever it may be. You don't want added oils. You, I mean, if you look at Jiffy, it is so sad. They have like mono and diglycerides in it. And really just get peanut, peanuts. That's it. Salt's going to be peanuts and salt. Um, rice cakes. I have a post on this and it's one of my most shared posts ever. I think that, and I'm not, my way isn't the only way, but I do get results with thousands of people, okay? Um, but rice cakes is nothing but a high glycemic food. So when you eat it, your blood sugar is spiking up and it's coming down. Often it's going to come from um, a GMO crop, or it's also going to have phytic acid in it. Phytic acid is an anti-nutrient. Right. And so when you're trying to heal your gut, you want to have nutrient dense things, not things that are pushing nutrients away, right? So brown rice especially has higher phytic acid than white. And so if you are going to do that, I encourage you to eat clean and introduce a rice cake three weeks later and see how you feel. If you're bloated, if you're feeling all the symptoms come back that you used to have, that is direct correlation with your rice cake. 
All and, right. and, and really, if somebody's asking that, they probably are eating rice cakes. So I would say, hey, how do you feel? Yeah. They probably would say, oh, you know, I feel crummy and I feel this way. Okay, well, guess what? It's it's 100% correlated with um, with what you're eating. And most of most of the just sort of feelings that you get from eating food as a, as a sort of bare barometer on how good that food is for you, are most of those symptoms that you say felt right after eating the food or is it usually four to six hours or next day? Like inflammation sometimes I feel like can be Impaled. a little delayed for people. For sure. Um, if you're eating clean, you're going to notice a difference in 12 hours. You will. You'll feel a relief of or a relief of symptoms. Um, if you eat something inflammatory, if your gut is really healed, right? If I go out and eat Chick-fil-A, I'm going to feel really tired after, but it probably will take me four to six hours to notice my fingers are getting puffy and then it'll mm. be tomorrow morning when my eyes get puffy. So everyone is different, mm -hmm. um, but you'll notice something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. That's good. That's good info for that self, yeah. self-awareness. Um, here's one from Jenny. Uh, Jennifer, how do you feel about frozen vegetables? Are they less healthy than fresh ones? Or are they pretty much the same? Um, I think that either either's fine. I know you can you can get selective on, you know, what's the brand of vegetables and whether it's organic, but I think there are companies out there who are picking it at the proper time. And so the nutrients can be um at a higher a higher portion, but I think for most people, it's hard for them to have um, fresh all the time, just right. because of where they live and it's just, it, it goes bad, things like that. So, I mean, I don't want to say that you can't eat vegetables if you don't do it one way or another, because America just needs to eat more good foods. Right. So don't be so focused over frozen or not. Do what works for you. Yeah, that's a great question. And I know I think people run run into that, not just with frozen versus fresh, but like organic versus not organic. Like I yep. know in certain grocery stores, just buying organic is not what most of the customers do. And so a lot of that stuff sits on the shelf. So by the time I get to it, it looks a lot sadder than conventional. And so then it's kind of this toss up of fresh and conventional or sad and organic. <laughs> and, you know, it's another thing that I just think eating it, eating it fresher in that case is often the decision I go on. Um, I don't want an over the hill vegetable. For sure. Yep. Uh, All right. You see the one that you want to go for? I love the oatmeal. We got to go there. Yeah, Let's go for it. Okay. What happens to oats when you put them in water? Mm. They expand, right? Um, especially Quaker oats. They came back with the highest amount of glyphosate, which is a pesticide. And pesticides are showing that they're driving up autoimmune and inflammation and just all the things. So if you're going to get oats, okay, number one, they have to be organic. They have to be. Sprouted is even better because it's better, easier to digest. However, oats, again, have that phytic acid. So when you are trying to heal your gut, by all means, remove oats. In fact, I have a um, architect, her name is Wendy, and she's this cute little like 50 year old woman. She, from the outside, she looks completely normal in shape, everything. And she started working with me and she says, listen, I, I was um, reading your, your stuff and you said, stop eating oats. And she's like, I eat oatmeal every morning. And she goes, I don't believe that's true. And I left it, right? You didn't have your wake up moment. It's okay. If you look good, you feel good, eat your oats. Well, then she shows up three weeks later and says, I got to tell you, I decided to stop eating oats for six days. My stomach has never felt any better. I didn't realize my stomach could be flatter. And I'm like, boom, there you go. It's oats, hmm. oats all day. Um, oats isn't everything. It's a cheap filler. That's why we're seeing it like, you know, in the bars and it's in pancakes and it's just oats is like the new thing. Oat milk is everywhere. If you look at Oatly, it has rapeseed oil, which is again, that highly processed omega, high in omega-6 oil assisted with a bunch of emulsifiers and ingredients we can't pronounce. So it's very unlikely you see oats and then you see really good ingredients with it. No, 
You can also go to um, YouTube, Jen Smiley Oatmeal, and you'll see my clean swap for oatmeal. Okay. All right. And so is not to spoil that too much, but I was going to ask you for people that really like eating oatmeal every day, what would you recommend eating instead? Is that, sure. does that give everything away? No, it doesn't. So my first one, my, my ultimate favorite one that works is I have an almond cow and you could make infuse different waters you know you can make your blueberry water your mint water yada yada but you could also make milks so you can put any type of nuts in a it looks like a, a filter right. and you can add your own sweetener you could add dates you could add coconut sugar maple syrup or no sugar salt whatever and then at the end in that little basket is the pulp Okay. Ah, so right. I love cashew pulp or almond pulp or walnut pulp. If you're allergic to nuts, you could do coconut, you could do um, tiger nut. Okay. But you take that pulp and you warm it on the stove with a little bit of clean milk. You mm -hmm. can pour some maple syrup in it. Game changer for oatmeal. There's also something called, and I want to correct myself if I'm wrong, but I think it's called note meal. N-O-A-T. Yep. Note meal is another really good one. Um, Wild Way is another brand that is a, I guess, a warm cereal that you can make in the morning, just pop it into a bowl, warm it up. So that is probably in our pantry staples, somewhere in our product recommendations, all the different oatmeal swaps. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, how about, let's go back to bread. We said we would address that one earlier. And I know Learn Folk Art has a question here about premium bread sold in grocery store frozen lockers, such as Food for Life's Genesis. Um, do they spike our blood sugar levels, even though they're labor labeled as flourless and sprouted? Okay, let's see. I'm going to check out Food for Life. Oh, that's, oh, this is a million Genesis. Is yeah, that's the... Ezekiel bread, right? Ezekiel bread. Ah, I, yeah, it comes yeah. in like, yeah, they're sprouted, right? The orange, orange colored bags. A lot of times yep. you find. Yep. I'm trying to find the ingredients. So you got sprouted wheat, sprouted barley, sprouted millet, barley, lentil, soybeans. Okay. So this is better than bunny bread. I won't lie. This is bread better than Newman's own. Okay. But are you eating Ezekiel bread and you're, how are you feeling? If you mm -hmm. don't feel your optimal, if you're struggling from something and you're eating this direct correlation, I also like to say, Hey, look, if it's everywhere and everybody's doing it, unfortunately it's, it's not that good. Um, but like I said, this is better than a lot of brands out there, but it's not the best. And here's why it's not the best. You got your lentils, your soybeans, um, your millet, your barley, some are from the bean family, kind of like the oats. What happens when people eat beans? They get bloated, they get gassy, right? Um, what happens to all these other ingredients in here is it's a pseudo grain. Grains cause inflammation and pseudo grains can aggravate your gut as well. Again, I'm trying to help people heal their guts. And once their guts are healed with the product recommendations, then I want them to introduce Ezekiel bread and see how they feel. Because if your body is staying in, a, in an inflammatory state, you can never pinpoint what's really aggravating it. When you go clean and then you introduce, hey, I'm going to have my Ezekiel back for breakfast. And you notice that sudden difference. You go, oh my gosh, okay, this, this is it. This is, this is a culprit of why I feel the way I do. All right, we got time for just a couple more questions. So if anyone else has questions, send those in and we'll try to get to them. Um, Jen, let's talk about sweeteners. Uh, we know avoiding too much sugar is a good thing. All the detrimental effects of regularly high blood sugar. So a lot of things are coming on the market. People are hearing about like stevia and monk fruit, oh um, not to mention like super artificial types of sweeteners, which oh, are, yeah, there's we all know are problematic. Oh yeah, there's like over, I think 150 or maybe 200 different names for yeah. sweeteners. So where do where do stevia and monk fruit fall in? I mean, they are natural in some ways. Where do they yeah. fall in compared to some of the other sweeteners? And how do you feel about people using those to help cut back on sugar? Yes, absolutely. So I've had two um, practitioners on my podcast talking about stevia because I said, hey, look, they want to hear it from a doctor, right? They don't want to just hear it from me. 
I, for the longest time in the beginning, told people stevia was okay, but there were still people battling constipation and bloating. And once we took stevia out, I said, I need to figure out what's going on with stevia. That here's the issue. How stevia is processed is they're using 40 different chemicals in order to get the stevia we all know today. So mm. all of these solvents and all of these chemicals are actually leaching into what we're calling stevia and it's mm. causing that gut disruption, okay? So the first thing is I would turn to monk fruit, but you wanna make sure you're getting non-GMO monk fruit. I think it's a, there's certainly not enough studies on monk fruit as there is stevia, but mm -hmm. I can tell you if you're looking for a zero glycemic index to keep that blood sugar more level, monk fruit is the way you want to go. Okay. And, and I assume that's more, that's the, from what we know about that processing, it's much cleaner process. So there aren't residual yep. chemicals, yep. et cetera. Correct. They're not using those harsh chemicals to, um, to, to make it. And of all the clients that I have worked with, monk fruit hasn't come up to be bothersome, whereas stevia is 10 out of 10 problematic. Since you are all about reading labels, I have to ask this issue with stevia and um, all of the stuff that is left over from the processing, that's yeah. not on the label, I imagine, right? Is not that one of all. the problems with labels? Like, is there a lot of more stuff that if we could <laughs> report on there, that would be helpful? Oh, absolutely. And I think that's where consumer education of ingredients is super important and where it is lacking in this holistic approach to becoming the CEO of your health. Because again, people are eating oatmeal, right? And they're eating rice cakes, but they don't know about phytic acid and they don't know about um, pesticides that are being leached in their food. They don't know about the chemicals and stevia. They read vegetable oil and think it's vegan. They don't realize it's high in omega-6s. So it's a whole nother level of education. And I can tell you, Tim, that it took me eight years to figure this stuff out because it's highly confusing. Um, there's a lot of trial and error. I've spent a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of searching. And so what I'm trying to do is give people it all bundled up like, hey, I've done the research. I've done this with thousands of clients. It works. And this is the shortcut. This is the road to get here now. Nice. Okay, cool. I think um, I want to respect everyone's time. And I think we're getting wow. toward the end. So just time for like one or two more questions. Do you see any that are jumping out at you, Jen? You want to you wanna grab or should I... Um, it looks like people are asking about wine. And so I would say wine is great. Um, you could check out dry farm wines. They're a good one. You want to get wines low in sulfites and low in sugar, no added sugar. So there's some at your grocery store. There's some online. Um, again, it's understanding what you're looking for in the wines, but you do not have to give up any food group at all. That's the beautiful thing. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and maybe one more for Kelly, because sugar is so hard for people. Yeah. Kelly uh, is, is asking about for folks that feel like they need to be all or none about it. If I give an inch with sugar, I'm done for the rest of the time. I'm at my parents' house. So tips for those kinds of folks. Like it's great for everyone to be able to participate and just enjoy the day. But for those of us that know just even a little bit of dessert is going to be problematic. Mm -hmm. Um any tips or wisdom, pieces of wisdom for folks like that? For sure. So I think that for the most part, people look at desserts and they think sugar. Um, and sure, there is sugar in there and it's the wrong kind of sugar. But I, I want people to start looking at it as preservatives and ingredients we can't pronounce. Mm -hmm. Because often all the ingredients that someone has used to make this dessert, each ingredient or yes, each part of this recipe probably has 10 different ingredients. So you might look at the brownies and think sugar, but I want you to look at the brownies and think 50 ingredients that my body doesn't recognize. Because mm. really, if you just eat cacao, which is real chocolate, even if you ate the worst sugar ever, let's say high fructose corn syrup, okay? And then let's say they use an egg, then you're looking at three ingredients. That's not the problem. It's not the sugar. The problem is it's all these weird ingredients we can't pronounce and recognize. So um, again, if, if you're going into the holidays and you don't eat clean, don't go into Thanksgiving thinking, 
this is where I'm going to save myself. This is where I'm going to hold back. Like, really, you have to be all in. You have to want to go on this journey for yourself and make it a lifestyle. And just don't look at Thanksgiving as the time that's going to make you or break you. Great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I think that's all the time we have for questions. Jen, thanks so much for being here and sharing all of this great information with people. Of course. That was amazing. Thank you so much, Tim. All right. Well, um, thanks everybody for being here. And Jen, we will see you another time, I hope. Okay. See you soon. Thanks, Take Jim. care. Bye-bye. And um, everybody, you, thanks for being here. Uh, wanted to see, make sure you see my screen here. Just a couple of wrap-up items. If you, Once again, if you want to get in touch with Jen or learn more about her work at Wake Up and Read Libels, um, you can visit jensmiley.com. And again, that three common morning foods that are ruining your, your day and killing your energy, you can get that guide over at um, her website as well, freemorningguide.com. Um, so really appreciate Jen being on. And as promised, we do have a little drawing that we'd like to share with you all. So we'll be giving away one uh, CBD and book bundle. So we've got a holiday CBD gift bag of um, one full spectrum hemp oil, one joint and muscle rub, and one lip balm. And then also Dr. Rawls' newest book, The Cellular Wellness Solution, that will be given away to one lucky winner tonight for being here live. If you would like to join that, just enter your name, your first name and last initial, and your email address into the um, Q&A box and hit submit. And that will enter you into the drawing. I'll draw right after the webinar, um, pick one winner, and then we'll let you know in the webinar follow-up email who won. So go ahead and enter your name here if you would like to get a hold of um, or get a chance to win that drawing. Um, if you don't win the drawing, you can check out the book over at vitalplan.com. It's for sale there. The uh, CBD is really awesome for the holidays. Extra stress um, helps promote better sleep as well, helps promote, promote joint comfort um, and a lot of other great effects of uh, full spectrum hemp oil. And then lip balm is lovely, peppermint. Um, so you can get that at vitalplansselect.com if you don't win the drawing. So once again, just enter your name into the Q&A box, first name, last initial, and make sure you enter your email, folks, so that we can email you um, if you win. I see some names coming in without the email. So first name, last initial, and email. And then um, we'd love to see you come visit us at Vital Plan if you want to learn any more about herbs or holistic health, um, clean eating, uh, lifestyle factors that can help promote longer, uh, more vibrant life. All that is at Vital Plan. We've got lots of great blogs. Um, if you're interested in herbs in particular, we've got a great herbal ingredient database. It's got a lot of in-depth information. There's all sorts of information you can find on the internet about herbs. Uh, it can be very conflicting and very confusing. So this is a nice um, one-stop place to go get a really comprehensive look into the benefits, the concerns you might want, want to know about depending on your situation, um, dosing, different research behind it. So great resource there. Um, we've got an awesome supplement quiz. So if you're interested in starting a personalized herbal regimen, um, you can take our survey there and get a recommendation. And then stay tuned for more webinars in the future. We've got a newsletter we put out. And for that CBD, you can find more of that at Vital Plan Select. Um, and then, of course, we are on social media. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Um, but we hope you enjoyed the webinar tonight. Thanks again, everyone, for being here. And uh, hopefully we'll see you on another webinar soon. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Enjoy your holidays. Hope you enjoy lots of healthy food and use some of the swaps we talked about tonight with Jen. Um, take care and enjoy the time. All right. Bye, everybody.